I would like to talk about Our Lady, about being homeschooled by Our Lady. It is her queenship, but I have to uh, uh, just mention one thing apologetically, maybe not to ask forgiveness, but as far as apologetics is concerned, uh, in Matthew 23, when Jesus says, and maybe you've been told this, uh, you call your priest father, and yet we just heard in Matthew 23, call no man on earth your father. Well, Jesus is not speaking uh, specifically, literally, because he himself, for example, in Luke chapter 16, when he speaks about Abraham in a parable with the rich man and Lazarus, he calls Abraham, Father Abraham. In Matthew 23, it begins, verses 1 to 17, such and such became the father of such and such, such and such became the father of such and such. There are fathers all over the place. In one Corinthians, I mean, go on and on and on. It's in the Bible, just trust me. Okay, so he's not speaking literally. He's speaking about because they wanted to take even the place of God the Father. Okay, so their fatherhood was totally dependent on, based on the fatherhood of God. They don't, you know, they were not the big shots. It's God the Father. Okay, I and mean, I can go. Actually, calling priest father didn't begin in Catholicism. It began in Judaism. Okay, and uh, you have to go to Judges for that, and you'll see that. We're told there, be priest and father to us. Okay? You get the idea, okay? I'm just trying to whet your appetite so you can look into it a little more. He's not speaking literally. Let's go to Mount. I one of the reasons I believe, and you know, we get the idea of Mary being the queen, and she is the queen. In the Hebrew, it's called the Gebira. And the Gebira was in the in the in the, in the monarchy of Israel. The second in command after the king was the queen mother, not the wife. And she sat to the right of the king. And she's the one in second in command after the king. So Our Lady is, par excellence, the queen, the Gemina of the kingdom of heaven. She, after Jesus, is the second in command. She's a queen, but she's also a mother. And she's also a Jew. She's Jewish. And Jews are not afraid of much. So though she can be sweet as and cooks like Louisiana women, guess what? She's also the most tender, but she doesn't shy away from the tough issues. For example, what we read in Matthew 23, I'll use that as a parenting moment, as a homeschooling moment. In Matthew 23, Jesus goes on to speak about the scribes and the Pharisees, and he speaks about some heavy-duty faults, some heavy-duty issues in their life that need to change. Now, God sometimes with us allows situations that expose our sin, and we might be overwhelmed. Oh, I can't believe I said that. I can't believe I did that. I can't believe, I can't believe, I can't believe. But that usually is a sign that that is a sign of prayer. That is the fruit of prayer. That we become more aware in what is hidden comes to the light. So God, if we are, if there's a lot of pride, because there is a lot of pride in us, we are shocked. We're all, I can't believe it. We are overwhelmed. We are put down. We are, we feel bad. I mean, it's good to feel bad. We pray for contrition. But in fact, in the family of God, through Our Lady, there are moments to be mothered. There are moments to be parented. See, what the scribes and the Pharisees did, instead of going to God and saying, everything you said is true, this is me. My diapers are really soiled. <laughs> and, and then go to Him in humility, making no excuses. Then that would be the beautiful opportunity for Jesus, the Father for Jesus, to parent, to teach him how to overcome this stuff. But no, they did not do that. They blamed always the problems on someone else. So in those moments in our life, in family life, or whatever's happening, that God is exposing our sin, if we can quickly turn our eyes off ourselves and turn them to Jesus through Mary, and ask that she homeschool us, ask that she mother us, and this becomes a parenting moment. John, in John 19, 
is told by Mary, by Jesus, Behold your mother, in verse 27. And it says, And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. Now, women have an incredible, incredible sensitivity to what is dirty, to what is not clean. We think in the community, we guys, we did a good job cleaning. The sisters come, Father, you feel right here. You know, they begin to tell us. I mean, they said, we thought we, you know, we deserved a little applause. Well, the sisters can notice more than we can. So our lady can notice more than we can, much more, what needs to be cleaned up. The goal is this, that though the topic is whatever we're dealing with, whatever trait we have in our personality, whatever sin, the goal is that God will impact us more through Mary than whatever we're seeing. And then once we begin to taste how it is to be parented, then we begin to, even with excitement, as God is unraveling our heart and we're seeing the stuff in us, this is just another opportunity to go home and be mothered by our lady. But eventually what begins to happen is this. As you and I begin to be mothered by Our Lady, and we begin to experience more strongly Heaven's action through her immaculate heart, what begins to happen is that she begins to exchange your heart for hers. In other words, her motherhood begins to express itself, act, and your motherhood begins to decrease. Her motherhood is, of course, a lot better a lot stronger, a lot more loving, a lot more understanding, a lot more merciful, a lot more wise. But for that to happen, in our being parented, mother, in this homeschooling, what is absolutely crucial is that we recover peace as soon as possible. Whatever the issue, whatever rattled our cage, whatever glass of water we are drowning in, recover peace. And when I, I've been shown by our lady, I repeat her name. For me, it's mom. And I repeat it over and over again as if it was a throat lozenger that I'm sucking on. But I'm doing it in my heart. I repeat her name, I repeat her name, and suddenly she's here. I sense her. The atmosphere has changed. And then I talk about what was the issue. I tell her all the details as if I'm a little boy on a high chair. My, hand, my feet can't even touch the ground. And as I begin to express what's going on, what's the issue, what happened, there's nothing more beautiful than to notice that heaven is attentive, that heaven has noticed, that heaven cares about the smallest detail about you and me. But it isn't with an attitude of criticalness, or you should know better by now, or come on, how long have you been at this? No. Heaven wants to have room, opportunities, occasions to visit us. That's why we pray in the Our Father, on earth as it is in heaven. We pray that every day, on earth as it is in heaven. So God wants whatever the occasion in our life to become eventually as it is in heaven. And then once you and I begin to experience heaven's closeness, our appetite for heaven grows. Heaven begins to manifest itself through us. And then we begin to experience ever more, less and less, the life of living alone. Facing our problems, our issues, our sinfulness, our conversion process, based on my weak human efforts. It's heaven's action. And heaven delights to be that for you. Heaven delights to be that for me. Heaven wants to be wants us to discover how close it is to us. And what better way to experience it than the best of mothers. And then you become overwhelmed by heaven, by God, because you and I were created to be overwhelmed. Until you experience being overwhelmed by God and Our Lady or God through Our Lady, most of us are overwhelmed by persons, places, things, and events. It is not the will of God that we be overwhelmed by persons, places, and events. Yes, that can happen for a moment, 
but we have a need. It's a human need to be overwhelmed by heaven's action through God and through our name. In Jesus' name.